Hello and welcome back. Today I'd like to walk you through how to do a firm air riptide on the Fluke Philips PM6690 but also known as the Pentelum CTN90 or the Tektronix FCA 3000 series. Doing firmware updates is always a little bit tricky, of course, always at your own risk. But done with the right steps, it is pretty low risk. This is the frequency counter I'm talking about. Here is the version from Fluke. And, well, it has, first of all, a lot of digits. But the cool thing with this one is you also have stats or graphics. So the counter is pretty cool. Clearly this is not just a basic counter. I think most of uh, the hobbyists will find it second hand in eBay like I also uh, did. I don't think Fluke still sells it new. Tektronix I'm also not sure. But I think I saw on the website of Pendulum that they still sell them. But because we obvious buy it second hand, probably it has an old firmware. Of course, I also didn't buy new. I find mine on eBay. I look at the firmware and the firmware version is 1.11. And the version I found online was 1.28. The firmware update can be done over GPIB or over USB. I will be using the USB option in this video. I think by default the device is set to a GPIB, so we go to user options, interface, and then we set it to USB here. You can switch here, GPIB or USB, and then OK. Now it's set to USB, we go out. I already connected the cable in the back of the frequency counter. Use a proper USB cable, I have here with a choke on it. Before you connect the USB cable, you need to be sure that you have uh, NI Visa installed. Well, I've got so many programs that connect to test equipment. I'm sure I have it. What I usually do is I open the device manager. So I know when I plug in the USB what's actually happening. I will open the USB and then I plug the cable. And when everything is good, you hear bling bling, and then we see an extra device here. That is the USB measure device. And we see here it's connected with the IVI, that is the Visa, so it is detected. To do the update, I found the official program from Pendulum for the CTN1991, and it is the version 128. That is an official release. Um, and I will be using that loader. I think that is the original uh, manufacturer. And I already saw that it automatically detects that I have a fluke. And probably if you have the Tektronix, it will also automatically detect that. I come back later to that version. But first we update always from to the 128. The loader can be started just by double clicking. You will get a warning. This is one of the latest version, the 307. After selecting the firmware file, it will automatically do a check. We see here, okay, I detected the fluke, the PM6690, the serial number, and here the version 1.11 from 2005, which is a while ago. The file I selected, it could also detect it is version 1.28. Do you want to continue with the update? And we can select yes. Now we see that it is sending the firmware file. In the display we see now it is receiving. After all the data is in the machine, it will change over the screen and it says flash updating. And in the screen of the counter, we also see updating firmware. So what it did at first, it copied all the data to the frequency counter, then waited until everything is there, probably does a verification, and then really starts doing the update itself. Then at some point it says it's ready, and we see this. The counter sort of in the display, I, I saw it sort of rebooted, but it rebooted very, very fast. Um, then it seems sort of locked and the power button doesn't work. 
he can wait a few minutes just to be sure, but I found out you can almost immediately uh, reboot it after. You need to pull the power plug, you wait 30 seconds, put it back on, and then when you go to the info screen, you can see here it updated to firmware 1.28, and depending on the version that you have, it would say S or T. In my case, it says T. Then I found a little readme file that says, well, after you've done the firmware and you rebooted the device, you need to do a self-calibration or a calibrate internals. I'm not sure what it does, but it says here, here is the password. You go to the menu, go to the calibration menu, you type this password here, and then you find an option, calibrate internals. And then it looks like this, and this could take like three to five minutes and just don't touch anything, just wait until it's done. So that's it, it's actually quite simple. Um, while doing this, I was also in email contact with one of my viewers, David from the UK, and he sent me a new firmware. He was in contact with, I think it was Pendulum or Tektronix, I don't remember which of the two, but they sent him a file, and that is version 1.32. This one you cannot find online yet. You see it is a little bit uh, bigger. So I was a little bit alarmed. I was a bit afraid it would not work. But David was brave enough to do it on his own Tektronic and it worked. So I will do it now on my Fluke as well. I'm starting exactly the same uploader that I used for the 1.28. And here we can see it still thinks it's a Fluke, so that is good. So the uploader is really for both uh, models or all three brands. And here we can see it detected as a correct 1.32. So we push the yes button and we go again. Okay, again after a few minutes, it says again it worked. Well, three minutes it says here, and then another minute of burning. So I saw again quick power cycle of the counter, but it is locked. So after I click OK, I will just unplug the power cable, wait 30 seconds, and start everything up again. And here it is, looking at the display. Uh, it still says it's a T version. If you have a Another brand, it could say in other letters, because there could be an S or it could be a T. I have another picture from a uh, Tektronix that was from uh, David. The Tektronix updater looks exactly the same, only it says uh, Tektronix. And here we can see it works also on the Tektronix. Here it says an S, but I think that that's more to do not with the firmware version, but really about the device if you have an S version or a T version. So that is it. it. It was actually quite simple. And thanks again for David having the new uh, 1.32. It was from 2022, I think. So a lot newer than uh, than the other firmware that we find. I do not have a change log. So I do not know what happened between 1.28 and 1.32. But being at a lot newer and the meter still working fine. Of course, I did another uh, calibration internals just to be sure, because apparently all the settings need to be set. I'm not sure, I think it's voltages. You could see that I use screenshots, but I did do it on this computer, but I didn't want to run my screen recorder while doing the firmware update, just to be sure that I was only running the update process, because of course it can be tricky. So when you also do this update, make sure you do nothing else with that computer at that time that you run the firmware update. So that's why I use the screenshots. I will leave the firmware with the burning tools uh, down below. That's it. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.